something was going to happen. Something wonderful. Fans, oh, look at that. Colin has joined us already on this beautifully warm and a hot night when people should be out and about enjoying themselves. And instead, they're in here. Ange, Ange is second on the list this time. Look at that. We've got six people already. Well, people are hanging out for us. They've got the air conditioners on. They're inside their houses having a good time. Now, I've got to say up front very quickly, it is so warm. I've actually got my front door opening. So if you're hearing noises coming through the microphone, it's not my tummy. It is actually stuff outside. So there you go. Might even be like the Mr. Whippy coming down the street at some point. So <laughs> there you go. All right. So uh, our little chat for tonight, this is one that everybody can contribute to. So after a couple of weeks ago, we had a bit of a discussion, got a little bit like a bit intense. So we decided to lighten the mood a little bit. And um, now normally this would be a visual thing where we put up visual pictures and all the rest of it but i uh said as i said to jeffro because people who are watching the show and submitting in their thoughts don't have pictures and we're just pretending that we're a bunch of dudes in a room ironically because you can do that now because hey you know the restrictions have all been lifted just talking about stuff where you don't have pictures we just chat so uh, there you go um all right so i'm just going to talk about awesome moments in films and tv shows the stuff that makes you go oh my god that is grouse that is awesome something that you can remember most films and most tv shows have them uh i made a long list jeffro made a list that he sent through today as well but this is one for everybody out there so because mps didn't send a list and he didn't need to mps mate give us a couple of your most awesomest moments in movies and or tv shows that's uh pushed your buttons well, I didn't know I had to send through a list. So no, I you, didn't, you didn't actually. That's why I thought I'll ask you. <laughs> so there you go. And this is for everybody out there to go, oh, my God, oh, I remember these moments. They were just the coolest thing ever. So give us a couple of these on the top of your head, old son. I'll give you a couple to start with. I'm going to go back to the first time you see Superman fly. Absolutely. That is when you believe a man can fly. And that was one of my – every time he flew, it didn't matter, you know, when he landed in the city and all that sort of stuff. That was just – absolutely awesome every single time on the other side of the coin but i still loved it was watching the greatest american hero fly because he didn't have the control or the power but he had to learn how to fly and for me that was always fun to watch and i always loved watching him take off and then crash land at the end of it cool um with you regarding your trios uh Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, and Vincent Price. That's a very good selection, William. Well done, sir. So, yeah, yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, that sequence you're talking about with Superman, after his first flight, you can say, okay, you see him, see him flying throughout the show. But the very first one, as you said, when you go through Jarrell's head and he's standing in the uh, Fortress of Solitude and flies, and it's all done practically. It was all done for real. Oh, yeah, I think it's one of the greatest moments in cinema history because in 1979, that was like a really, really, really big deal. And uh, it was like, oh, my God. And, yeah, because the post actually said, you'll believe a man can fly. And when you see that moment, you go, Yep, I believe yep. it, especially if you're a young, young dude like I was. So well, there you go. Very, very cool. Uh, Jeffro, what have you got? You got anything where you chuck in while we wait for people to sort of send through their suggestions? Oh, absolutely. So I was trying to think there's a hell of a lot of uh, movies that you could probably uh, pick, but there was a few television ones that I thought well, that really made an impression uh, for me. So in my uh, teenage years, it was uh, Space 1999 and The Eagles. So by the time they'd done all the puppet shows and all that, they were very well versed in making realistic looking craft. And and this is all back in 74, 75, before we had, you know, the cutting effects of uh, George Lucas. And when you saw those eagles fly, man, they looked fantastic. Mm. Uh, also on the, uh, the TV front was the television show, The Prisoner. Now they had these... Um, uh, things called rovers, which are essentially big white balls. And when they made the television series, they were going to try and do something with um, buggies and it didn't work. And at last minute, they used giant weather balloons. And if you've ever seen the television show, uh, those weather balloons in conjunction with the sound effects look fantastic. And it's a great experience actually uh, watching that. Um in the 70s as well, uh, Six Man Dollar Man. When you watch that and they showed Steve Austin actually running and they did it really cleverly. They did it in slow motion. So when you saw that, you actually somehow managed to think he was running really fast all the time. So 
really clever uh, trick there. And moving on to... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because in the opening credits, they actually showed him running at full speed. And you go, yeah, oh, okay, that's what it looks like a normal yeah, motion, even though it was a sped up. So, yeah. They did. They showed him running at full speed and slow motion. So they did yep. a lot of combinations of both, just depending on what they felt like was the best uh, at the time. Yep. Yep. And uh, the other one in the television uh, series uh, was something we watched uh, recently, was Deep Space Nine, the episode Sacrifice of Angels from season six, where you got to see the Dominion in all its glory, mm. going up against every single uh, ship in the Alpha Quadrant virtually. So it was like the big space battle of all space battles. Very good. Two things, Jeffrey, can you move to your right, please? You're, you're actually moving out of your frame. Very good. And I was actually in a club meeting or a convention when they showed that episode of D-Space 9 when the Jem Hadar blew up the Galaxy-class starship, the Odyssey, I think it was, and I swear the whole audience just lost their load. They've never seen anything. Nobody blows up Galaxy-class starships. And the Jim Hadar, who at that point nobody knew who they were, that was a jaw, massive jaw-dropping moment. And, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, very, very cool. A lot of people have got some uh, things coming through. Uh, yeah, I had a feeling that this would come up. Good old Death Blossom from Last Starfighter. There's one way of killing all your bad dudes, just get your ship to spin around. And if you mm -hmm. watched uh, Mandalorian recently, you'd be like uh, the baby, the child and just spew up your guts afterwards. So there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, v in the 80s, yeah, well, you didn't know if the visitors were good or bad, but, of course, the signature scene in the entire series, and I had this written down here, is when Diana eats the hamster. And it's like, oh, that would have just, like, people would have just gone nuts over there. It's like, oh, my God, she's just eating the freaking animal alive. It's like, yeah, that was the moment that sold the series and the kind of thing that people just remember for decades. So uh, uh, good old Rambo. Uh, yeah, we're not into Rambo, so we're just going to move on from that, uh, Mr. Collins. So there you go. Cube. Cube was a really good movie, actually. Really, really good low-budget Canadian film, if I recall, uh, with Nicole DeBoer and a whole bunch of other dudes. But, uh, yeah, it was very, very clever because all of it was all in one uh, one room. But we're talking about individual scenes here. But, yeah, the start of it uh, sort of threw you off because you had no idea what was going on. Um, good on you, Colin. Absolutely. The opening of Star Wars A New Hope. And, of course, it's a, it goes beyond that because when the ship passes overhead, I mean – you could look at film history and you'd never seen anything like that ever before. Now, there's a little bit in dis with Discovery in um, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, but that wasn't as impactful. It was just this slow pass by with the, no audio. But the Devastator, the Star Destroyer passing over in A New Hope, that was just like, even if you just switch the movie off right there, you'd be going, yeah, mate, that was magnificent. Never seen. That was a cinematic first and absolutely fantastic. So uh, there we go. Uh, we're back to trio. Oh, somebody, oh Jesus, more messages. Uh, here we go. Uh, bu, 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 bu. Oh, there we go. There's more, more of your trios yeah, there. Steve, and and Gamut, so there you go. Uh, now, I agree with you, Aaron. The T-1000, the first time you saw him turn from Chrome after the crash into uh, Robert Patrick, magnificent. I mean, that was like, yeah, this movie is grouse. That has just ticked all these boxes no matter what happens from here on out. And... Because you've got to remember, we're looking at everything from the first time, the first time that this ever occurred in a movie or a TV series. And, uh, yeah, that's very, very cool. Uh, sorry. Well, that, been, uh, that one, sorry. Uh, Jurassic Park, where you get to see the first dinosaur. Same effect. Well, actually, with Jurassic Park, it's with that Tyrannosaurus Rex sequence because that's where it really drove home because the humans and the and the dinosaurs are really interacting and the, and the, the Rex is a threat. So prior to that, they're sort of just all walking around doing their bit. But you are right, though. The dinosaurs are very cool. Uh, MPS? The liquid metal in Flight of the Navigator, the first time we see that, was similar to the T-1000, but it was different, but it was still cool that the ship yep. actually went down and made the stairs and all yep. that sort of stuff. Yep, true. Um, I think probably T-2 had probably a bigger audience, uh, and it was certainly because right. it was a threat. Uh, but, yeah, you're right, absolutely, from a technological point of view. Um, and you said the Quantum Leap, the oh boy scene. Jeffro, you would know about that one? No? No, I didn't watch Joe. Oh, from okay. from yeah. that point of view, Quantum Leap, every time... He went into the next body, and I think for me that was it because you went, he'd, he'd turn up in someone's body and he wouldn't know where he was. He'd just go, Oh boy, and that was basically the beginning for the show. Um, I agree with you, Daniel. Uh, the Transformers, I was actually at an Aust I don't remember this it was vividly with the uh, I was at an Ostrich meeting when I think it was Colin showed the first Transformers trailer, and all the fanboys in the room lost their load when the Transformers are transforming, and it was like. 
guys, you need to get a grip. And I don't mean on your own body parts. It was a little bit wrong. What can I say? But it looked so cool. And Daniel, ironically, was in the room. And he was one of them. He was a little bit too enjoy uh, enjoying himself a bit too much. Michelle, man from Slurry River, seriously? Come on, man. Is this how you used to serve people in the, in the in waitressing days? <laughs> Got to get with the program. Man from Slurry River, holy golly. Uh, here we go. Uh, E.T. and Elliot and his bike flying across the moon. That was very, very cool, wasn't it, eh? So, because you didn't expect them the bikes to take off. That's right, because you got the police chasing them with the guns, not the radios. And of course, the bikes just take off and away you go. And I thought, yeah, that was a very, very cool moment. What do you reckon, eh? Very iconic. Yeah, very cool. It's, it's even though I've never seen the film, I still know the scene. Very good. Um, there's a few moments in the abscess. Uh, probably the most key one was the water tentacle because that was something we hadn't seen before. That was actually one of the fir very first, if not the first, organic uh cg effects so uh yeah but the the drowning sequence uh i remember um at star walk in the first convention we actually showed a sequence of the film because you know conventions used to show movies and they actually showed the drowning sequence uh of the abscess and you swore that she drowned for real i mean that was really hardcore that was such an intense scene and uh yeah you just didn't expect to see that in a kind that kind of film so um, yeah, with Ed, Bish uh, Ed Bishop, no, Ed Harris, and I can't remember the lady's name, but uh, yeah, it's like, oh, God, that's a bit of a hard, bit of hard work. That, uh, um, all right. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's good old bit of car with Genesis. Yeah, that was, uh, especially, actually, I think you'll probably find with Star Trek 2, the actual Genesis um, simulation where you get down to the planet and it's all, that was one of the, the first, if not the, that's just bad English, if not the first ever CG sequences in films. I think it uh, was surpassed everything at that time and took them like months to do it on a computer. But uh, I think that was definitely one of the top uh, sequences of all time for that movie. Uh, MPS, you're going to say something? I thought it was Ms. Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio. Yeah, that was yeah that, that'd be it. Yep, yep, yep. I couldn't remember who it was. So, yeah, but that was a very intense sequence. The second biggest um, name. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's... Delene, it's Delene. See, even Daniel, the, the super nerd, can make his mistakes. It's Delene, dude, not Delene. So go back and fix your spelling, son. But uh, yeah, that was a bit of a major moment in Babylon 5. So uh, yeah, actually, if, with Babylon 5, when the shadows first appeared, probably was one of the more awesome moments in the entire show. Uh, yeah, I figured there'd be a fair few Doctor Who ones that crop up. I was actually thinking, and I don't know this, but I would have thought the very first time you had a transformation from William, William Hartnell to Patrick Troughton, I reckon at the time, that would have been like, oh, my God, that is just amazing because we've just changed actors just like that, and it's the very first time it's happened. But uh, what do you reckon, Jeffrey? There'd be a few Doctor Who ones? Oh, I mean, there was definitely uh, some great moments in, in Doctor Who, and, I mean, the first um, regeneration, I mean, nobody sort of really saw it coming. Now we sort of do, but, uh, yeah, you're certainly right about that. But um, certainly the Trial of the Time Lords one, it was a... Uh, uh, it was a computer-generated one-shot where it's like you're coming in and then suddenly you dip down straight into the uh, the Gallifrey uh, sort of courtroom. So it was a very nice uh, long CG tracking shot that sort of everybody sort of really enjoyed. Very, very cool. Uh, Michelle, yes, abscess is abscess. Sorry, I come from a fan background. You know, we never called anything by its actual name. So uh, there you go. Um, Hudson's... See, with Daniel, I would say... That with aliens, the key thing, without doubt, without even blinking your eyes, the key moment of the entire movie is get away from her, you bitch. Nothing beats that in aliens, right? That is the scene of all scenes. And I, that is one the whole audience went off their nut for when she comes out in the in the power loader suit and you know, get away from her, you, you know, and does the whole thing, get away from her, you bitch. And the audience absolutely loved it. Me personally, I love the whole let's rock sequence when they get in there and they're getting attacked by coming out of the goddamn walls. Oh, that whole scene is just fantastic. You know, you pull your, um, yeah, get your, you get your men out, you know, and, and uh, it's just not happening. And yeah, it's not good at all. Uh, Jeffro was right. Jurassic Park, it was sucked out of the cinema the first time I saw the audience gasp when they saw, saw dinosaurs. Yeah, ironically, um, Sam Neill's character, it was like that too. He's like, you know, it does like when he's in the van and he, in, in the four wheel drive and he sees the dinosaurs in the distance. Absolutely. And then they looked as real as. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a magnificent sequence. It really was. So, yeah, totally agree and, and on that one. Speaking of dinosaurs, even the theatre show, uh, which I can't think of what it was called now, but when they had... Um, dinosaurs? Walking with dinosaurs, yeah. 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 yeah, walking with dinosaurs was even the same thing because mm. eventually the lights were down low enough, you didn't you didn't realise the actors were in the lights actors, and they would come up to the audience, and you would sort of seriously sort of go, well, 
yeah, yeah. Let's, let's take a step back here, people. No, yeah. again, again, a live action performance that actually had a wow factor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, meteor man flying four feet above the ground. Totally unexpected. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not sorry. Uh, William, you're on, that, on your own on that one. I don't have the Blu-ray for that one, so I can't help you on that one. Um, uh, so, Michelle, I, yeah, in Alien, without a doubt, the chest-bursting scene, right? Magic. And even the cast, when they were filming that scene, the cast didn't know what was going to happen. John Hurt knew and the director knew, right, this is what's going to happen, but the cast didn't know, so their reactions would be genuine. And I would have to argue that, yeah, in Alien, that is like, because it's the first time you've ever seen an alien and a chest burster and all the rest of it. And it was like, oi, this is this thing's hardcore. And, uh, yes, I have to agree with you on that one. Um, so, Daniel, Darth Maul's entrance in the Naboo. No, I actually disagree. I would say in the trailer, you yeah, can't go to the movie because trailers do spoil things. But in the trailer, the very first time you see a double-ended lightsaber because you'd never seen one ever. And in the trailer for the movie that came out in 1998, you see him standing there and one, you've got a beam at this end, and then the beam comes out at that end, and the whole audience went, oh, shit, we didn't know he could do that. That that was the moment. Mm. Absolutely. And you guys then, agree? Well, again, I would suggest that Duel of the Fates, the fight, the whole two versus one with the double lightsaber, was the first time we saw Jedi be athletic and be really awesome. You know, like yep. they were trying to get him off, the two guys going, right, right. Yep. Was, we've got to kill this guy and he's going to kill us back. That was one of the best parts yep. of the Phantom Men. Yep, cool. Speaking of fighting, uh, yeah, so Spank has picked out the fight in Predator. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was a, a pretty cool sequence. I actually really loved the fight sequence in Alien versus Predator. We've got the Predator and the Aliens. For the first time, you get to see them bashing each other up. And that's when you got the like the, he's got a lot of the like the, the alien wins actually at the, the very first time you got to see that and uh because everybody regardless of what you think of the film was the first time you ever got to see these two villains bash it out together and i, I was i was very impressed and yet the, you got the distant shot of the alien who's like you know doing his rearing his head because he's one and all oh, absolutely gross so there you go well, uh predator, carol's sorry what i was gonna say for predator the first time that he's his body gets hit by water or damage and it goes from camouflage Mm -hmm. to seeing something actually happen. That was awesome because you go, hang on a second, now we can get an idea of what's actually hunting them because yep. we never actually physically saw him properly. Yep. Um, going back to Doctor Who on this one. So, Jeffrey, you remember this one, Two of the Cybermen? Oh, yeah, because you got to see, like, three stories, four stories of uh, Cybermen, and it was just such a great visual image to be able to see this huge wall of uh, Cybermen all sort of in these sort of... Uh, Crips essentially, so very, um, very startling image. Not bad for a uh, uh, television show to be able to sort of pull uh, something like that off. Very much so. Colin's mentioned about the intro to Superman. Yeah, actually, the intro to Superman, the first movie, yeah, that was a pretty spectacular moment. You know, the whole thing and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that was that was that was pretty cool. You'd never seen anything like that before. That was that was an opening credit sequence to be proud. It was almost like a movie unto itself. It went that long. Uh, there you go. In terms um, of sequences, I would yep. also say Batman the Animated Series. When that first came out, the still pictures to that didn't do it justice. When you sort of see him ducking and weaving and doing all that sort of stuff, oh, yeah. for me, yeah. that was just Batman, quintessential Batman. Um, Tomo's best moment was the original Time Machine. I'm trying to think if there's anything that really significant. With the Time Machine, the original version with uh, oh, fuck, he's right, Rod Taylor, it would have been when you first saw the Eloy and the oh, no, It'd be right? the, uh, the part where the window store changes over the uh, the, the years. Get yeah. To see the, yeah. Yeah, because you actually do feel like you're travelling in time, even though it went to a yeah. point of time that didn't actually occur. I would have thought, yeah, it's actually when you first see I think it's the Morlocks, the guys underground, and you realise, oh, my God, they're, they're actually eating the Eloy. And it's like, because you expect, because your Eloy are all like the young and blonde haired and, you know, all these people, and then you realise under the ground you've got these dudes who are chowing down on them. Uh, I reckon when you first discovered that, that for the audience in the 50s, that would have been like, hey, mate, I didn't see that one coming. But, uh, yeah, the actual travelling in time, yeah, yeah, very, very cool. Um, Aaron has picked a big one out here. Uh, cliffhanger with Sarah had to be placed by an android. You remember this one, Jeffro? You're the Doctor Who dude here. Uh, that would be, uh, I'm just trying to think. Um, uh, I've gone a blank, sorry. I'm just mental blank on that one. It's the Tom Baker era, of course. And, um, yeah. Joe, do you uh, remember it, though? Uh, I've, I've gone a blank. Oh, 
mate. That's why I pay you these zeros, mate. So you remember this That's stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you get zeros sometimes. But one thing's for sure, if Sarah had been changed by an, an Android, that would have been pretty freaky for people who didn't expect it. You know, it would have been like, oh, my God, she's she's a robot. So, uh, yeah, yeah it's very, very cool. Of fear. Um, Aaron, you'll have to tell me if I'm right on that one, if it's hand of fear or not. There you go. Um, Angie said from Star Trek 6, the Enterprise in Excelsior, the attacking the bird of prey. Yeah, that was a very, very cool sequence. For me personally, the explosion of Praxis at the start of the movie because you didn't expect it. And it was the first time we'd seen a shockwave because it was before uh, the spe Star Wars Special Edition. And the shockwave that go as it goes out and when it hits the Excelsior, because when you've got the Excelsior ship and the shockwave's coming th towards it, you don't know what the hell's going to happen. Is the ship going to just go <laughs> or what? And when it hits, it hits bang. And uh, that's the Excelsior. Moment. Yeah, exactly right. So, yeah, that. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you. The battle scene with the, the bird of prey was cool, but I think the Praxis scene. Yeah, that was something we could look and say, like, oh, that is awesome. Because I remember in the, I was in the cinema at the time and people were going, shit, what's going to happen? Because the ship is so small in comparison to the wave. And you go, uh, yeah, this could end badly. Good old Sulu could uh, be drinking his last cup of tea here, the way we go. But uh, very good stuff. Um, Darth, oh, yeah, well, this is a no-brainer. You're right, Daniel. Yes, no, I am your father. I mean, in, in terms of film reveals and, like, moments it probably rates right at the very very top in the top five at the very least um you probably have to go to non-sci-fi movies to find the other four but yeah that's an absolute no-brainer what do you reckon guys i i would also say that and the uh, the asteroid chase from uh, empire as well no oh, yeah. yeah 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 and i would say the first death star run with a in in a new hope where they blow the death star because that was you're sitting on the edge of your seat watching almost flying in the in the trench yourself you know that had to be one yep. of the, the great moments in the film yeah well that bit where actually the camera and actually goes into the the trench i remember in the cinema you almost got like vertigo or motion sickness because you see it come down into the whole thing and of course it doesn't just go straight in it goes up and down and moves around a little bit before it settles that's ingenious that absolutely ingenious it's like oh i'm about to lose my lunch and <laughs> my popcorn's about to pay revisit and it's just <laughs> and they did it twice in the movie so it was a very very cool um, everybody likes some melting Nazi in the uh, Raiders. Yeah, and it was very cool. You didn't know what was going to happen when the lid came off. And that was the thing. Once they took the lid off the ark and, and you said, shut your eyes, and you go, you're hearing the noises, what's going to happen? And I reckon that was, yeah, one of the really cool moments of the movie. What do you reckon, guys? When dudes' heads are exploding and dudes are melting and <laughs> all the rest of it. Yeah, I remember seeing that at the Springvale Town Hall during the school holidays. They replayed that. And, again, it gets me every single time. You sort of sit there and, and you watch. But you also wonder what makes closing your eyes do anything. So you sort of – there's that, that mystery and everything like that. And, and uh, yeah, great. Yeah, good old Indy had it all worked out. He could have said to um, uh, Marion, oh, yeah, have a just stab your sticky beak and check it out. And, he, yeah, she would have cocked it, so uh, it wouldn't have been too good. Um, War of the Worlds and Martians, though, they're different types of War of the Worlds, so I'm not too sure which one you're talking about, Carol. But in the original version, when you when the priest first walks up to them, you know, and you've got the big eye that comes down, you go, ah, uh, yeah, so what's going to happen here? Is it going to hold out his hand and it's like give him a donut or whatever? It's like, nah, it's going to blow him away <laughs> with the little heat ray. So, uh, and I reckon an audience watching more of the worlds in the original version, the George Pell version, would have been thinking. I mean, the movie kind of gives it away. Clearly, they're going to be antagonists, but still, it's um, it was a very cool moment, I've got to say. Mm. And uh, yeah, once they got going, they were just blowing the shit out of everything, and as they do, especially in the remake, which is uh, very, very cool. William, I'm 100% with you on this one. When Kosh dies in Babylon 5, killed by the shadows, and I reckon there were a lot of people watching those episodes at the time just like could not believe it was physically possible and you don't actually sort of see it's all done in flashes and you're seeing the reaction i think by one of the characters who's watching what's going on and uh yeah no one thought kosh could be killed uh and of course in babylon 5. remember that jeffro you're a babylon 5 fan i remember uh, koshi dying a few times on the morning show and brecky but <laughs> i don't remember much about this one crikey this is... how can you Jeez, this is why I pay you, you remove some extra zeros from your zeros. I tell you what, so it was a big deal. No one thought Kosh could die, even though in the pilot episode he kind of did cark it, but not really. So, uh, if I recall, um, Mate, what was um, what was Kosh's first name? What? Oshkosh. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> Can you move to the right a bit, Jeffro? You're upsetting me, mate. I need to get get my balance correct. Okay, Picard turning into a Borg. Yes, you know he's got the laser beam locutus of Borg. You know, and actually knew a lady who dressed their kid up, a little baby kid in a in a in a ball outfit, 
and she called him the cutie of Borg. So <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, um, but yes. But yeah, Picard turning into a Borg. Uh, absolutely. That was a really, really big deal. And I think the first time you see the Borg in Best of Both Worlds, like the very first time you got the, oh, they got the orchestral music. I think um, half the Star Trek fans were crapping themselves at that point because they knew the Borg were not to be trifled with. So completely agree with you, Arian, because at the end of that episode, it was like, how on earth are they going to fix this? How are they going to get Picard back? He's been Borgified. And as we know, removing Borg implants wasn't easy. So uh, absolutely agree with you on that one. Um, oh, yes. This is a good one, Michelle. Resetting Dark City. Yes, exactly right. So yeah. it's never daylight in Dark City. And, of course, the city resets every night. Yeah, that was a moment of like, okay, all the buildings are coming in. Have you guys ever seen Dark City before? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's a brilliant movie made by uh, Alex Proyas, I think the Australian director. Yep. And uh, it's it's a bit like Tetris on steroids. You know, it's like fantastic what they could do. Yep, absolutely. And you're right. When that then starts happening and uh, there's the sequence with the two people who start off being really, really poor people and the whole thing transforms and they end up being converted into rich people. And, yeah, it was like, yeah, right, I didn't see this one coming. So, uh, yeah, very, very, that was a good choice. I want to like that one. Uh, Android Invasion. Why is everybody saying Android Invasion? Uh, you got Carol, William and Kelvin are all saying Android Invasion. Not sure that it is. Is that the episode name from Doctor Who? That may well be the one that uh, Aaron was referring to where the um – Sarah Jane was revealed as a robot. Uh, Jeffro, this is I'm... for you, mate. This is for you, Jeffro. Carol and William get to host the next show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, golly, there you I go. I thought they were talking about the fact that the iPhone 12 is losing out to Android, so maybe that yeah. was... Ah, very, very good. Uh, when the red button is pushed on the uh, men in black car and the car transforms. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's... What do you reckon of that, guys? Yeah, it was it was good, but I think uh, from a car point of view, Auto Man and Cursor, when you see oh, it, yes, yeah, uh, going you know, those trans, in, you know, into a car and then he transforms into a helicopter. Come on, that was pretty damn awesome. I always wanted one of those. Uh, I actually would say, uh, Michelle, uh, the whole thing of dodging bullets uh, in the Matrix movies, but um, yeah, I would actually argue with Matrix the first time you see Bullet Time. I mean, that was just yeah. like. That was like revolutionary uh, in there. They used it a few times in the movie, but when you first see it, and I think it's the first time is when uh, Trinity does her kick in the air and the camera spins around and then it continues on. And it was like, that's one of those, how in the hell did they do that moments? Okay. It might not be that scene. It might be another scene, but still it's like you cross, you're thinking, how did you do that? Ironically, I actually knew how they did it because I actually saw a documentary uh, where they actually, uh, for medical purposes, they actually were taking all these cameras and they get the, the photograph on one top, one shot, and you can spin around the camera, the, the photo, but it was just not a moving picture. But I already knew about it. But, yeah, I mean, that was just like, wow, that is very, very cool. So, if at the very least, Matrix uh, and Bullet Time are, go hand in hand big time. Um, yeah. You have to be a bit more specific. Spank and the car in Mad Max. What scene of the car in Mad Max? Or somewhere where it blows up in the second one? Um, yeah, who knows? you got to be, we're talking about specific scenes here, old son. Uh, there you go. I'm going to throw one, throw one out that might be a little bit sort of uh, out there for you. In the X-Files, that creepy dude that would go through the ventilation shaft and that licked the newspaper and made his life. Yeah. He went, oh, he, he and went. the character's name was what? Tombs. Oh, very, oh, hang on. So you know Tombs, but you don't know Alien Android Invasion, <laughs> Jeff Rowe. I have, I have my moment. That's it. you got to go, son. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. God, how can you get that right? Actually, that actor was in an episode of CSI recently, and I go, I said to Lena, go, I recognise that dude. He's Tombs. And she goes, Oh yeah, the yellow dude who uh, does his thing. So uh, there you go. Uh, oh yeah, so ventilation shafts. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, yes, Carol, the original War of the World. Thank you. At least we clarified that. Very, very good. Uh, very good. So we're back to Kosh again, coming out of his suit. Oh, I think getting killed was probably the most coolest thing around. Uh, here we go. What have we got here? Nearly finished last season. Yeah, okay. Pitch black, absolutely planet building. Yeah, okay. Sarah Jane. Yeah, okay. First time we see black card Mad Max on. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, yeah. So, yes, the, the actual interceptor from Mad Max 1, the first movie, uh, when he first jumps in, he's got it comes with a bill driven blower and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was very, very groovy. I think a lot of the reveals in Mad Max were very, very cool. You know, when you're hearing the radio stuff and you just you're seeing bits of the car, you see the sunglasses up close and all that. Yeah, there were some really, really good bits in that in that movie, and they did the reveals really, really well. So uh, I really like it. 
Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in Mad Max Fury Road, where in the final chase you get to see all the cars and the guys on the pole swinging down. And that that was probably the most visually epic uh, part in the whole Mad Max franchise, I thought. Yep, totally agree. Um, episode of Galactica 80. Uh, where the, oh, yes, that was in the movie, actually, Conquest of the Earth, where they show a simulation of the silence coming down and blowing the crap out of Earth, and that was like freaking grouse. <laughs> Wow. And you're thinking, mate, what a shame you couldn't actually do that in real life. It was awesome. And uh, it probably looks incredibly dated now, but at the time it was like, oh, that is just schmicking. So, uh, Jeffro, do you remember that one at least? Oh, I absolutely do because they blew up uh, Los Angeles and there was uh, uh, the uh, Capitol Records uh, building yeah. as well. Freaking awesome sequence. Absolutely loved it. And, of course, the other shock factor in that show, sorry, go to you in a second, PS, is when you discover the Cylons are actually human beings. They've got the human thing which predated the new series by a couple of decades, but that was a bit of a big deal. It's like, oh, shit, the Cylons look like us now. Well, oh, how about that, MPS? I was going to say, from, from the original Battlestar, for me, it was when the Vipers took off every single time. I didn't care what else was happening. Oh, yeah. I always had to watch when they took off because they were magnificent. Yep. Yeah, it was really, really, really cool stuff. No doubt about I, that. There I, too. Would, I would see your Battlestar Galactica and raise you any... Uh, Thunderbirds lift off. I mean, well, those, I had, those I had, uh, uh, special ways that they get down to all the ships and then the launch, much better than Battlestar Galactica. I'm there with you. It's the launch of, of the Vipers and the launch of Thunderbird 2. The rest can all go jump. But Thunderbirds 2 launch was just the best thing to ever watch. You guys are unbelievable. I was expecting to have nerds at 20 paces and you both agreed with each other and it's like, they're boring. <laughs> But well, yes, see, I, saw, I saw Jeff Rowe's list, and there was no Thunderbirds mentioned on there. Uh, so, well, you know, it um, it doesn't necessarily have to be all there, does it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Very good. Say, or someone else will say it in the in the pub. Um, um, in terms of vehicles, I would also say Kit from Knight Rider. The fact that the car drives by itself, he can have a nap, and it talks to him. Who didn't want a car like that back in the day? Certainly, even though I was a kid, I still wanted a car like that. Very good. Um, I like with Daniel. The first time you see Godzilla in the new movies, I'm not sure when you say new movies. I assure you, you're not. I assume you're not talking about the '99 version. I'm think you're talking about the more recent ones. Uh, but yeah, Godzilla is a general rule, sort of like his shadows here and thingies there. Then suddenly, at one point, he does pop up. But yeah, he did look very, very good in the more later versions. Uh, I have to agree with you on that one. Um, oh, that's a good one, Michelle. Yeah, when Arnie peels his arm off, he gets the knife and does the slice and dice, and you go, oh. Yeah, right, eh? And just pulls it off. Yeah, didn't see that one coming. <laughs> yeah, that was a moment, wasn't it, eh? So, uh, and it looks so really Sorry, what was that? I'm going to give you a hand. Yeah, exactly right. Very good. Um, so I like that. Yes, you're right. Buck Rogers is the same takeoff as the Vipers. Probably because it was made by the same people. That's probably got something to do with it. Very good. Uh, what else we got? Um, well, here we go. Stargate, going through the Stargate. Yeah, well, that's interesting because you never knew, really knew what was going to happen, especially in the movie. You know, when they finally activate the Stargate, it's like, oh, shit, they've got this thing working. Well, how good's that? What happens now? You step in and then you just get disintegrated. Yeah, that was that was cool. The TV series that obviously carried over, but at the original movie, you just did not know when they went through it what was going to happen on the other end. So, yeah, I have to agree. That was actually kind of cool. Uh, where my whole course is now? I've, okay. I've got a few that I'm surprised people haven't mentioned. Yeah, I've got a few as well. I've got a list as well that haven't been brought up. So I might, uh, Jeff Rowe, you chuck in a couple and I'll chuck in a couple. Yeah, so I mean, the uh, the big thing was the uh, Blade Runner, the city flyover, where you got to see all that wonderful uh, tension to detail. I yep. mean, I'm not a big fan of Blade Runner, but I know a fantastic effect when I see it. Uh, another one would be Planet of the Apes, the final scene where you get to see the Statue of Liberty. I mean, that's something that people still talk about in terms of a nice twist ending. I mean, it's one of the most spectacular ones. Um, the problem with that is when they released the DVDs and the videos like three or four decades later, they actually put that scene at the end. So massive spoiler alert. You know, you've got the Statue of Liberty and you go, guys, you've just ruined it. You know, you don't want to do the big reveal in the video cover. It was on the cover for crying out loud. Yeah, bunch yeah, of idiots. And I see your Statue of Liberty and I'm definitely agreeing with you. And just right below it is... Take your stinking pores off me, you damn dirty ape. And just yeah. seeing the reaction of all the apes when a human being can speak magic 
that's right at the top there with a uh, good old bloody, oh, no, I am your father kind of moment. That was like, oh, my God, the human can speak. How radical was that? So, yeah, very, very cool Planet of the Apes. Keep going, dude. I'll, Jeff Rowe? I'll throw in the, uh, the White House explosion from Independence Day. Absolutely Man, awesome. Was a spectacular uh, explosion. Yep, uh, yep. And um, in terms of visual stunningness, uh, return... Uh, Return of the King, uh, the battles uh, that were in that last Lord of the Rings movie, absolutely fantastic. I know it's all CG, but, I mean, man, did that blow us away. And, I mean, it was part of the reason why I think he got an Oscar. And lastly, the um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the uh, the, the musical communication. Yep. Do, 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 do. What are the hand signals? Sorry? What are the hand, oh, the hand signals? signals? Go on, do the hand signals right now. <laughs> I'm I'm here we go. Can you see me? I'm doing it off air right over yeah. here. Sorry. There are people watching this right now who are doing the hand signals. And even ads, Adam Gill, who watches this show from time to time, is a big uh, Close Encounters fan, couldn't do the hand signals correctly. If I, he's just, oh, I've forgotten what it is. It's like, oh, it's like, hang on, here we go. Uh, do, 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 or something like that. So, uh, do, 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 do. Anyway, whatever. Nerd. So, I'm, I'm, the camera's on. Yeah. I'm getting all over. Go on. What? All you've done is ordered intergalactic pizza. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Very good. Going back to Lord of the Rings, when you got all those orcs there, what do you have? You have toad orcs. Let's move on, shall we? So, um, okay. So, Susie has mentioned about Spider Man swinging through and building the building. Yeah, that was actually very, very cool. Uh, the first time we did that in 2002. Yes. Very groovy, very groovy. Uh, the vial has mentioned about the DeLorean flying off and back to the future at the end. Yeah, that was a very because you know, where we roads, where are we going? We don't need roads. Oh, yeah, brilliant way to finish off the movie. Absolutely magnificent. Um, this is one from Left Field Washes Death and Serenity. Uh, what do you reckon, yeah. guys? It didn't wash with me. Pathetic. It, so, it, was a, it was a, certainly a moment we weren't expecting. I don't think it was one of the greatest moments, though. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Discretion made in the city number one side. Yeah, okay. We need to be a bit more specific, guys, and we're not getting into the jaws and all the rest of it because, yeah, we're talking we talk about the, the stuff that we like here. So uh, the things that I thought up that uh, – which I thought were actually iconic moments was the light cycle sequence in Tron. So if you saw the original Tron in the cinema back in 1982 and they're in the light cycles and they're running around the grid, it was like, far out. That is awesome. i got to get me one of these. Uh, that was a brilliant, brilliant moment in terms of animation and the way the thing moved. Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Still hot up today, in my view. Um, in the thing, when the dog's head splits open, no one saw that coming. What do you reckon, Jeffro? No one. The dog is it sitting there and its head just goes like a banana peel and, and it goes, okay. <laughs> it did take it all to the next level, that's for sure. Far out, yeah. An absolute moment. And it was like, oh, shit, these guys are in massive strife. It is hardcore and it is absolutely gruesome and gory and it was just like cinematic masterpiece. Um, in Star Trek, the motion picture, the first time you saw the Enterprise and Dry Dock. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's pretty freaking boring. But I've heard from people who are fans of the original series in the 60s when they heard the movie was being made and they finally got to see the Lady E on the big screen, all refitted and nicely redesigned and coloured and all that. And even though the sequence is a long sequence, it was just like they, they just – we're really, really exciting. Your BJ Trimbles of the world and all those super fans seeing the Lady E on the cinema screen, even if the movie wasn't that much chop, but just that moment uh, and the music and all the rest of it. Oh, yeah, that's that's definitely something to behold. Mm. Um, so one thing that would have been huge at the time you would have to have thought, and even today it still holds up, is in Metropolis with the whole Black Maria transformation with the rings going around the body. And thinking, Jesus. And even now I still think, how the hell they do that? It was like... Far out. That is that is really impressive, even by today's standards, because you can still look at it and you go, you know what, it still works. It doesn't look dodgy. It doesn't look CG. It doesn't look like cardboard cutouts. It actually looks completely real. And I reckon back in 27, 1927, that would have been like, wow, that is pretty schmick. Um, That's kind, of like, kind of like the scene in Superman where the, uh, the General Zod and that are being held in those rings that seem to start off yep. being stable and then they get wobbly and you go, how oh, they do that? That's you know, I know yeah. it's cool hoops, but that's yeah. very cool. Yep, absolutely fantastic. I agree with you. Uh, here's an interesting one. Uh, yeah, when Buffy died, yes, she does die because you don't expect your lead actress to cark it, your lead character to bite the dust. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Michelle. That was uh, okay. And of course, they all thought she was like living in hell. And of course, we find out later on she was in heaven, was wanted to stay there. And it's like, well, shit, who knew, eh? So, uh, yeah, that was, I like it when they do 
some shows are very predictable where they won't do anything radical, but sometimes when they do go, go a bit left field and do something you don't expect, you go, oh, I've got to applaud them for it, even if it's not always necessarily popular with the fans. So there you go. Um, where are we? Uh, da, 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 seen the outburst of Transformers. I, for me personally, Revenge of the Sith with Order 66. For all these decades, we always mm -hmm. wanted to know how on earth did the Jedi Order get destroyed, and now we finally get to see it. Execute Order 66 and the magnificent music and all the rest of it. And all the clone troopers suddenly turn on the Jedi and kill them all one after the other. And Paul Yoda has a coronary practically at that moment. Oh, magic, magic moment in those movies, I've got to say, uh, which I thought was very, very cool. Um, and that was actually the end of my list, strictly speaking. So what else have we got here? Metropolis haunting when the wooden door starts oh, uh, banging. A couple, a couple while you're reading those. Yep, go for it, man. For me, it was the first time we see the Batmobile in Batman in 89. Because yes. it's a brand new car. It looks completely different. And it's when they're coming out of the museum. Get, get in the car. Uh, yeah. Which car? Yeah, exactly. And he says, you know, he gets it and then, you know, grapples out of it. And then the joke is, yeah, where does he get all those wonderful toys? Yep. And so uh, this is just fantastic. It's, it's finally a time to see action in a film. Um, again, the Death Star blowing up in a new film because you didn't think it was actually going to work. It's just like shock, horror, and, and all of this. Uh, in terms of TV, I go to the incredible TV series from the 70s. When he changes from mild man of Bruce Banner to the actual Hulk, you know, ripping his clothes and all that sort of stuff, you know, I didn't know how that was done. Two years later, knowing that Torino is much bigger than the uh, Beast uh, and in cartoons, it was when the fiery phoenix was changed, the battle of the planets, when the phoenix changes to the fiery phoenix, you know, it goes from a ship to a flame, phoenix flame. That was just, I always loved making that. Very good stuff. A couple of people have picked up, you've got some sound problems that you're in NPS, and uh, we'll probably have to have a bit of a look at that later on. But uh, yeah, I agree with the Fiery Phoenix, was uh, always a very, very cool. So there you go. Uh, oh, I like that. Uh, NPS is broadcasting from Echo, basically. <laughs> no, very, very cool. That's actually very cool. We can make a joke out of just about everything that goes on in this store. So uh, in this show, there you go. Um, the key thing about uh, cool effects in shows is when you don't see them in the trailers and they just happen in the movies and you go, wow, I did not see that coming. In the trailers tend to give away a lot of good stuff and that is a bit unfortunate at the same time. Uh, and Stark, yeah, putting on yeah, Iron Man flying for the first time in some of those scenes. I mean, you could probably list a whole lot of stuff in the Avengers movies. Uh, but by the same token, they probably cancel each other out because they've happened so many times. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay, we've sort of been there, done that multiple, multiple times. So there you go. Um, very, very cool. Uh, oh, yeah, Susie, I agree with that one, the birth of Catwoman. Mm -hmm. Yes, that way well, that all occurred uh, with all the cats licking her and all the rest of it. You're not too sure what's going to happen there. So, uh, yeah, that well, was... Um, even the precursor to that where Max Shrek, if she says to him, well, you can't, it's not like you can just kill me or anything. He goes, well, actually, I can and Actually, then he has it's a lot like that. You yeah. know, he goes, well, you didn't see that coming. You thought, oh, yeah, he'll let, let it go. And no, he pushes her out the window. Yeah. Uh, oh, I do like this one from Michelle. Yes, when you finally see him rip the shirt up and you got the big S. Yeah, and that's what he, I think he goes looking in the in the phone box, but it's not a phone box. It's just one of those standing ones. He goes, Hur -hur, and he goes to the, around the, the swinging door. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, yeah, but that, yeah, Superman transform transforming no matter what was always going to be very, very cool. William said uh, when River goes into killing machine mode and kills all the uh, the Reavers in Serenity, yeah, I guess that was a bit of a cool one too, wasn't it? So uh, very good stuff. The bottom line is there's a lot of really, really awesome scenes. Who knows? There's all these ones we haven't even touched on uh, uh, at all, but uh, there are things that we do look at and go, man, that is absolutely fantastic. All right. We actually have to, where it's now 9.35, I've now got to wrap up the episode. All right, good stuff. Uh, we are going to be buzzing off. Go outside. You can <laughs> go out inside and enjoy the wonderful one night we've got out here with the temperature and all the rest. It's absolutely lovely. We are going to buzz off. And as always, make sure you stay nerdy. Okay, see you next week. See you guys.